Hello folks, it's Pastor Brandon coming to you live from Asylum Springs, Arkansas with another Pastor Brandon live broadcast. It's good to be here with you today. Um, know that there's actually a couple churches having their homecomings, so I know that if not everyone is able to tune in, that's alright. Um, <clears throat> we're going to be talking about um, a topic today. Uh, I guess if I had to put a title on it, it's... Um, Jesus Christ our ark and we're going to be talking about how especially in our days even in the end times how that he is our ark and I'm going to do some comparison as to the days of Noah as well as our days and I'm going to be showing you from how the, the ark that Noah built is a representation of of Jesus Christ. It's a picture and type of Jesus Christ. <coughs> so, if you guys have your King James Bibles with you, if you can turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I'm going to get there for, I'm going to get there here. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. This is what it says. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now you realize that by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, uh, the, Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul in his epistle writes something very, very specific. And the very specific thing he writes in here is, if any man be in Christ. Okay? And so... The word in is actually a very key word <coughs> in this passage. Okay? So what what um, so what does it mean to be in Christ? Um, what I believe it means is that you are born again and you're sealed with the Holy Ghost. Okay? Now if you go to John 3 3, John 3 3. John chapter 3, verse 3. It says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And so, we see that Jesus is saying, If you're not born again, uh, you won't see the kingdom of God. Um... In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, it says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. <coughs> so, we see here that Jesus said, You must be born again. And when we are born again, when, the, when, the, when, when we are born again, we are filled with His Spirit. But that Spirit is kind of like a down payment. And so, when we take a look... We were not to grieve the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is that seal that we are sealed with. Now that's that's a comfort because we know that we can't we can do there's nothing that we can do to break that seal. We just can't. Once God seals you, you're sealed in him. Amen. So it's interesting. Now I want to point out being what I want to point out uh the, the term born again <clears throat> okay so what I've researched is that the term born again is mentioned nine times in the Bible and I say that because nine is the number for fruit bearing you know you take a look at a child in a mother's womb uh, the child is in that is in the womb for nine months and then is birthed after that those nine months <clears throat> that child is a fruit. It is a it is a fruit of the mother's womb, and the, and God says that that fruit should never depart. Amen. That that fruit shouldn't depart. Like and what I mean by that, meaning that no one should do anything to physically cause that fruit to depart from the womb, because God knows and He's shown us that that fruit in that womb womb is alive 
okay? So, we see here that, uh, so it's, so it, number nine is the number, is the number for fruit bearing. Okay, so now, I'm going to take you, so in the, in the ninth book of the New Testament, okay, the ninth book, that would be Galatians, okay? In the ninth book of the New Testament, you will find nine fruits of the Spirit, okay? So if you, so if you could turn with me to Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 24, Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. <clears throat> and that's going to be verses 22 through 24. And here, okay. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Okay, that's nine. Those are nine. You see right there is nine fruits of the Spirit. So when a person becomes born again and they're filled and sealed with the Spirit, those, you'll start to see eventually through time these fruits in a person. Amen? <clears throat> now, uh, where was I? Okay. Uh, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Amen? So, now having said that, we see so far to be born again uh, with bearing fruits of the Spirit as well, you know, so, okay, so we see that, hang on a second. All right, so we see that, you know, to be in Christ we are born again with bearing fruits of the Spirit as well as being sealed until the day of redemption. Now we're going to just take a moment and we're just going to take an examine and how we bear fruit. So, <clears throat> if you could turn with me to John chapter 15. John 15. John 15, verses 1 through 6. <clears throat> it says, I am, the, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch of me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that he beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it might, may bring forth more fruit. Now, you are now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. So no more can ye except abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same, bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. <coughs> now... <clears throat> Um, we don't produce the fruit, okay? We don't produce it. We just bear it, okay? The one who produces that is Jesus Christ. He's the one that produces the fruit. We only bear the fruit, amen? Now, I want to make a couple of points to that. In Isaiah, in Isaiah 64, 6, <coughs> it says, But we are all as unclean things. And all, and all, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Okay, so we see here. If, if our righteousness are as filthy rags, what makes any any of us think that we can produce fruit? Because Jesus said, "Without me, you can do nothing." By the way, without Jesus Christ and without the, the shedding of His blood and without His blood upon your life, you have your righteousness are as, are as filthy rags. Amen. Now, Romans three twenty three it says, "For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God." <coughs> so we see here, 
that because our righteousness are as filthy rags and we all fall short, we cannot say that we bear fruit. Oh, not bear fruit, sorry. We cannot produce fruit. We can bear fruit. But there is no way we can say that we... There is no way that we can come out and say that we produce the fruit. We can only bear it, not produce it. Okay? If, if we all sin and fell short, and our righteousness is as filthy rags... What makes us think, again, what makes us think we can produce fruit? Jesus doesn't say anything about producing fruit. He says, he says that we're supposed to bear fruit. Producing fruit and bearing fruit, fruit are two separate things. Producing is where it's all on you and you're trying to work at it. That's you producing. Okay? But bearing is not up to you. It's up to Jesus Christ. You could try to produce fruit, but you won't. You won't be successful at it. We're so we are to be fruit bearers. We're supposed to bear the fruit, not produce it. There's a big difference between producing and bearing. One's a workspace, and one's not. Amen. Now. <coughs> Uh, Philippians Philippians 1 6 it says being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you would perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ by the way who is it who is it the who is it the one who's the one who actually starts and finishes that good work Jesus Christ you do not Jesus Christ starts and does the work we're supposed to bear it Okay. Uh, now the reason why we're talking about being in Jesus Christ and how we're talking about fruit bearing is I believe fruit bearing is a part of being born again. And being born again is being in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> now the reason why we're talking about that is because Jesus Christ is our ark. And he is the only door on that ark. Okay? He's the only ark and he's the only door. Okay? Eventually that door is going to be shut. Okay? Um John 10 9, it says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and he shall go in and out and find pasture. Okay? Matthew 25 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they were ready to go they were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut so eventually that door is going to get shut and once it's shut it's too late that door shuts it's too late think about that um okay so it will be just like the days of noah Okay, Matthew twenty four thirty seven. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Matthew twenty four thirty nine. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay, so <clears throat> to kind of better understand this, we're going to kind of do some comparisons. We're going to take a look at the Old Testament. We're going to kind of take a look at three different areas. We're going to take a look at a little bit of wickedness. We're going to talk about God's judgment. And we're also going to talk about um, God's plan of salvation. Okay? Uh, so with that said, the first one is wickedness. Okay? Let's let's go back and take a look in the days of Noah. Okay? Wickedness. Uh, Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Okay, so back in the days of Noah, there was so much wickedness and so much corruption going on. What does that sound like to you? What does that sound like? What does that sound like? Today, don't it? Especially in politics. Especially in the churches. So much corruption, so much wickedness. Okay. Um, and 
we see that the thoughts of their hearts were only evil continually. That's why all, you know, and, and, and God sent the flood because of the giants. I mean, part of it was the wickedness, but a lot of it was because of the giants. And the giants, I'll tell you something, the giants, I, maybe I'm wrong on this, but the giants could not be redeemed. Those giants will never make it to heaven. And the reason for it is because of their DNA being messed up. The giants were, are, were a unredeemable group of hybrid humans. They were unredeemable because of their messed up DNA. <clears throat> um, now let's 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 look in the New Testament now. Second Timothy chapter three verse one through five. It says, "This know also that in the last days." Uh, perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous, boasters proud, blasphemers disobedient to parents unthankful, unholy <coughs> without natural affection truce breakers false accusers incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good traitors heady high-minded lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away okay so we see there was wickedness in the days of Noah and we we're starting to see that there's a lot of wickedness in our days God speaketh once he ate twice okay uh, God's judgment number two okay Genesis chapter 6 Verse 12 to 13. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all the flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Okay? <clears throat> By the way, God's going to do that a second time. Except not with, he's not going to do it with water. He's going to do it with fire. Amen? But before that fire comes, or maybe even during, I don't know, before, after, during, I'm not. But there's also going to be other judgments on this earth. Okay? Second, Th Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Okay. The falling away is because of great delusion, great deception. That's part of the judgment. And by the way, that man of sin be revealed. That's the Antichrist. The Antichrist is going to be God's judgment. It's going to be God's wrath towards the towards an unbelieving world. Okay? Second, Second, uh, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 11 through 12. And for this cause... God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So, there's going to be a strong delusion that's coming. That's part of the judgment coming. That's, the, that's part of the coming judgment. And it says that they all might be damned who believe not the truth. So you see... It is judgment towards a group of people that don't believe the truth. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. Or in other words, pleasure in sin. <clears throat> okay? Now. Strong, like I said, a strong delusion is, is a part of God's judgment. Along with the, uh, a strong delusion and Antichrist are going to be a part of a, is going to be part of God's judgment. As a matter of fact, I believe that part of the strong delusion will be the Antichrist. Okay? Because uh, a lot of people are going to probably fall for it. And people are being conditioned right now to fall for that strong delusion. Can't fall for it. We shouldn't fall for it. Okay? But here's some good news. People don't need to fall. People... 
don't have to fall on the strong delusion. Okay? People don't have to go to hell. They don't have to. Okay? And by the way, God has a plan of salvation. That's going to be the last part we're going to be talking about. <coughs> okay, in the, in the days of Noah, okay, Genesis chapter 6, verses 14 through 18, Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without pitch. Without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits a window shall thou make to the ark and in, an, and in a cubit shall thou finish it above and the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof with a lower second and third stories oh, hang on a second a window shall thou make to the ark and a cubit shall thou finish it above and the door of the ark shall be set oh wait a minute and the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof with lower second lower second third story shall thou make it and behold i even i do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life and from un from under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die but with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. Okay, so there's eight people. Eight is a number for new beginnings. Why? <clears throat> eight people went on the ark. Eight people came off the ark. Okay. Um, that was days of Noah. Now to our now to the New Testament. John chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. John chapter 8, verse 35 through 36. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the Son abideth ever. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. So, as we see that Jesus Christ is our ark, and he wants people to be in him and abiding in him. The time is coming that the great delusion will be here deceiving people, and if it were possible, that it might even deceive the very elect. And I'll prove it. Uh, Matthew 24, 24, For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall, they shall deceive the very elect. Amen. Now, I know it's kind of hard to sit, and it's kind of hard to uh, <clears throat> get a hold of. Okay? But if you got, okay, but for non-believers, today is the day of salvation. Jesus Christ wants you to come upon the ark, upon and come in, come in, because that time that there's a coming a time when that door is shutting. Okay, like I said, like I said from the very beginning, in Second Corinthians five seventeen it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away; behold, all things are become new. Okay, if you're not born again, today is the day of salvation. If you're not born again. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you confess it with your, if you confess it with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is who He says He is, and you put your faith and trust in Him, you'll be saved. Okay. For the believer, I want to encourage you to stand firm on the Word of God. Okay. We all need to stand firm, even me. We all need to stand firm because it's the Word of God that will deliver you from trouble. And so, <clears throat> for the believer, know your Bible. Know your Bible. Because the time is coming that there is going to be a great delusion that if you don't know your Bible, you might fall into it. And the only way to, to know whether if things are true and false and truth and lies 
The only way to know and, and, and to know is to know your Bible. God has given you everything you need we need to know in this book. Amen. So anyways, I know this was kind of a I don't know, lengthy and short. I'm not sure exactly how long it is, but um, that's what I had for today. I hope that you got I hope you all got something from this. Um you know, we kind of went through some information, but just want to encourage you that Jesus Christ is our ark. And if you're not born again today, run to him. Run to him. There's only one ark and there's only one and there's only one door. And you have to go through that door. Amen. Uh, so with that said, this is Pastor Brandon and I'm signing off for the evening. Uh, till next time, God bless you. I love you. Uh, keep me in prayer. Keep the, these videos in prayer. Keep the ministry in prayer. Um, and uh, just pray and just pray that God will take this and use it for his kingdom for his glory um, anyways um, I love you God bless you all we'll see you next time bye